Welcome to Leverage to Build Wealth, where we discuss and educate entrepreneurs, mortgage, real estate, and financial service professionals on how to leverage tools and other people's experience to truly leverage to build wealth to create the lifestyle and legacy you desire. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today's uh, episode. My special guest is Rene Rodriguez. He is uh, incredible. I've had the opportunity to meet him in person twice at uh, two different Ampcons in uh, 2021 and 2022. Uh, listen to his podcast, have his incredible book, Amplify uh, Your Influence. This man is a game changer. Uh, there are so many different people I've had actually on the podcast uh, in the YouTube channel so far who've been able to experience the Amplify event going at to uh, uh, Renee's uh, uh, event in person to be able to really dig in and find their story to change their... Uh, not not perspective doesn't it doesn't give it the the oomph it needs it really uh changes their whole life you know uh, whenever i was talking to J jamie cavanaugh she's like renee game changer life changer tom mancuso you can't do anything without talking to renee sam parker oh my god you're you know he's such an acolyte that's how i first heard your name was from sam parker at a aim event a uh, a mingle event and he said tommy you need to meet Renee, you will change your whole perspective. And so whenever I was creating this channel, you're one of the pillars that I was hoping on my wish list to be able to have. And so I greatly appreciate you coming on. Uh, a little bit about uh, his background for those uh, who are new to Renee, his, uh, his expertise is in behavioral neuroscience. He uh, has a passion for the application of it, not just like the research. He wants to be able to understand, hey, where's the metal hit in the meat? How do we make this actionable? Which I really love. And, and the big premise of this show is how to find actionable ways to leverage to build wealth. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's the CEO of a couple of companies and uh, is just incredible. He has a way of digging to help you find your story, help you find your voice. And uh, with that, thank you very, uh, very much, Renee. And, and, uh, coming to our show. It's a pleasure being here, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, this one, we're going to go a little bit different. Instead of going into your story first, we've got some big questions. You meet with the industry's leaders in so many different uh, aspects, but specifically right now in, in the mortgage and in finance, I mean, a whole different kind of other companies deals with sales and influence and persuasion. You're dealing with uh, Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies and helping them uh, really get the best out of their uh, their workforce. What are you noticing trends right now in this interesting market that's going on? What are you noticing? You know, I mean, it depends on the industry, honestly. You know, you're looking at some industries that are doing great. Some are you know, uh, act, when I say act, act rate dependent. They don't have to be, but they still do. And I get it as an, as an aggregate, how it is. I think the thing that I'm looking at is, and this is the way I've always looked at things. You can look at how interest rates or pricing or an inventory affects an industry. And too many people say, and, and usually take the approach of what the industry, what happens to the industry happens to me. Well, I can't control those things. And so there's a, there's been so much focus on what people cannot control. And when those things happen, like interest rates, People took advantage. Oh, it's awesome. They should. When interest rates went down, everybody made money. They forgot that that was not something they can control. And so they made their value propositions around things that they, that really weren't under their direct impact. And so when that those things turned around, they were left with not knowing where to go. And to me, I've always tried to say, let's build a strategy. Let's build our value proposition around things that are things that we control, things that can't be taken away from us, things that somebody can't flip a switch and shut off. And that right there is the main focus that people should be figuring out. You know, you've got lawsuits in, in real estate, you've got interest rates and in mortgage and financial uh, planning, you've got inflation, you've got all sorts of things that are affecting things that they can't control. But if they can get out there and go to the basics, meaning build relationships, learn how to build trust with people and uncover value that's not seen, that's huge and how do you do that in mortgage well help a renter realize that they can own a home 
in real estate, help somebody realize that they can upgrade their home or uh, turn their equity into value. And financial advising, it's the same thing. There's so many different things that have to be uncovered. And if they can go do that, I think it's it, they will make it through, not only make it, and that's the thing, we're waiting out the market. Stop waiting. Attack markets. But those kinds of things, I think, are what need to happen. You know, I really like that. That's some uh, uh, incredible points. I really like how you mentioned trust, of building trust. Trust is really the ultimate currency, if you really think about it, because you can't influence someone that doesn't trust you. You can't provide real solutions if they don't trust you because you're just speaking to deaf ears. Uh, that's one thing I really like about the platform that you help is you help people understand their story and it has a way of penetrating the hearts and minds of your listeners, those who you have the opportunity to, to serve. And, but you still have to deliver. You have to have the goods. You know, it's more than a warm, fuzzy story. But your story is important to help establish that trust. What have you uh, noticed through your your observations? Are some of the ways that people can strengthen their trust factor, their, that authenticity, their, their story, to be able to help get in the door easier? Is is what I, I know. There's no silver bullet, but what have you noticed through your observations? Yeah. Well, I think that's one thing is that there isn't a silver bullet, but there's a lot of things you can employ and there's a lot of different approaches you can take. One right now is, is really spending time on your personal brand. And the reason why personal brand is so important is that your brand shows up to meetings before you do. So I would say, imagine, imagine having a thousand foot soldiers out there telling people that you were amazing and they knew your calendar. So they'd show up to every meeting saying, wow, Tom, Tom's here, man, this guy's amazing. He followed through on what he says, look at the results he's gotten. And they do this massive presentation for you before you show up. Mm -hmm. and then they stay after you leave to confirm everything you said. Well, that's what a personal brand does. If you have a personal brand and you, you people know who you are and you, you walk in, they're like, man, it's so good to see you. You haven't met yet, but it's as if you've met because they feel comfortable with the things that they've seen. And so the brand creates trust. Another way of saying that it creates psychological safety is really what we're trying to create. Because we, we all know that trust is important. It's become so cliche. We say it over and over and over again. But what the question should be how. And so when we're thinking about psychological safety, we're thinking about creating structure, order, and predictability for people. And so they can, they can I can make a safe choice working with you because my risk is lower. So what are all the things that have to be done to lower risk? Well, testimonials are great because it shows a track record of success. People have used you before. If you have no testimonials, nobody's used you before. I'm brand new at the process. Well, how am I going to trust that? I might trust you as a person because that's the other thing. Trust isn't all encompassing. It's, it's sort of a, it's, it's situational. I might trust you as a person, but I may not trust you as a financial advisor or as a loan officer or a real estate agent. And so I got to be able to trust you in this segment of, of trust. And, you know, first as you as a person is the most important piece. But you know, what's interesting is that I know some people that may, I may not trust as a person, but they are the best at getting a result at this. And that's fascinating. So we might use them and in, in, in compartmentalize trust in that sense for a certain piece, but I might do it and make sure I keep a, you know, tight boundary to the relationship, but you got to look at what specific kind of trust are you trying to create? And what, what is, why do people use other people? Why do they trust them over you? That's a really important piece. You know, some, so me as a speaker, which is a fascinating process is, you know, I'm, I'm what's known as an impact speaker. I create big impact and, but there are people that are more famous than me that sell more tickets. And so I can say, well, you trust me. Yes, absolutely. You impact. Yes, Renee, I know I'm going to get impact, but you won't sell as many tickets as this person. <laughs> okay. Frustrating as it is, it's not my yes. choice. It's the market's choice. And so. For me, I have to learn how to also build my brand even further so that I can also be somebody who sells tickets. And so that that's a specific application of saying you, you have to understand that there's multiple facets to trust and it's an ongoing lifelong journey to figure out all those pieces. And then it changes from market to market, from individual to individual. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's like nailing jello to a wall sometimes, but <laughs> it's worth it. You know, I think you're a master of the pivot, Renee. Um, whenever I have observed, uh, from, from listening to the podcast, going to the events 
And uh, uh, I've had a couple of special presentations you put out that I go to. You seem to embrace the pivot. It's amazing how many people fight against it. You know, I, you have this quote that uh, I thought was really interesting. Um, it was talking about uh, uh, the mindset, you know, like the, the uh, when it comes to the market, you know, doom and gloom, you know, it's not a market mindset, you know, it, it, it's a mar- or a market condition. It's a mindset. And it truly is because you know firsthand people who are going gangbusters in each of the industries you're just talking about, mortgages, real estate, financial planning. And uh, and you also know others, you know, have already closed up shop, you know, they're done, yep. you know, and it's the same market, you know, you can even be people in the same zip code, you know, and it's that mindset. Um, I have seen where you've talked about how you hated social media. And the whole idea about it, you know, because you know the quality of the content that you have. I mean, when you know that you're, you have top tier advice recommendations, then you're seeing people dance like, I don't want to be derogatory, but you, you don't want to see people who look pretty stupid on TikTok. And you're like, how are they blowing up? And I'm offering life-changing advice. And so I, I understand how you're kicking uh, uh, against social media for a while, but then you pivoted and now you got a tremendous amount of followings on all your different platforms. Uh, you've seen with COVID, uh, the market kicked you in your jugular. You had to pivot. You know, um, Can we talk a little bit about how for people who are either new to the industry, seasoned in the industry, and maybe because this market's different. This market is different than 08. It's totally different kind of uh, things. Uh, for people who uh, who need to have that tweak to, to view opportunities more than obstacles, can you talk about pivoting and how to reframe? Because there's a lot of people right now who are holding on to dear life, but they want to change, but they maybe not know how. I mean, it's a, there's a lot going on with that concept of, you know, making a shift on how you show up for the world. I mean, nine 11 made me pivot. So did, uh, COVID and, you know, social media, there's all those things, but I think there's an underlying component to me that is one. I don't, I don't have a choice, right? So there's, there's a power of not having a choice, you know, I, I, I don't have parents, both parents are not alive. And there's no trust fund. There's no nothing. So anything that happens, I've got to create. And there's a blessing in that. As painful as that is sometimes, a, there's a blessing in that because it makes you extremely resourceful. The other side of it too is, is a conscious understanding of the resistance. You know, I mean, I've had to pivot health-wise. And the, all of those things, the resistance to change is all the same, whether it's financial, health, career, relationship. It's all the same thing. And when you understand it, it doesn't make it easier, but at least you can devise a plan to do it. Yeah, there's an integrity side for me too. Like the reason I lost weight is because I was losing trust in people with people. Like how can Renee, you talk about change yet you can't seem to manage yourself. You know, so I had to go out and lose the weight and, and make sure that it was there and that I could be congruent in my message. And so there's a lot of different pieces there, especially, you know, and also knowing a lot of those changes, I go in knowing ahead of time that this will be a good story. Like I want this, I want this to be a story. It sucks. Now there's no end in sight at the moment, but there will be life is seasons. Like things come and go. Like I gotta, I think that's a wisdom of the ages that we realize as we get older that Good things come and good things go. Bad times come and bad times go. It's a cycle of life. It's a business cycle. There's four seasons. They come in in four in the same order they've been since the beginning of time. Yes. And there's certain things that are predictable. And so if, if you know that, I already know that during the winter of, of life, during the difficulty, people are going to stop running. They're going to heart hibernate. Well, I always look at that as a great time to run. You know, one of my favorite things to say is run whenever no one else is walking. Yes. Practice when no one else is. Sleep when everyone else is partying. Those are all separator moments. And if you can separate yourself from the rest, when things come back around, you'll be so far ahead. And you got to do that on faith. Watch other people realize it, but you realize that anybody who's successful has had to have that mentality. It didn't come afterwards. So it's not like, okay, when I'm successful, then I'll believe this. Nope. It doesn't work that way. It's It's got to begin now. Like whether or not this is how I think and, 
And then magically the success comes. And I say success with quotes because it's, it's lots of different forms of it. Yes. But you got to be able to really look past all that and then ask yourself, where am I at? Where do I need to go? And then, you know, then there's motivators, like I, little philosophies, like one, who, who would I want to be, you know, who, what do I want my kids to see right now? What kind of person do they want them to see? What kind of behavior should I engage in? And then there's certain things like, okay, well, all right, so I don't feel like doing this, but tomorrow, what do I want to say that I did? Uh, I want to say that I worked out. Well, then go work out. Like it's being able to pull that future to the present. And if you can pull the future feeling to the present, you start using that as the motivator to guide your present. And so then you, in essence, change your past, if that makes sense. Because right now is the past of our future. And so then design your past as you want it. And, and God, I wish I would have gone to the gym. Okay, so I want to say that next week. Go to the gym this week. Next week I go say, I'm glad I went to the gym. You design it. And it it is philosophically simple. It's just hard to do. And it's really hard to conceptualize too. So there's a lot of those different pieces at play. I love that. You know, uh, that, that puts a, a, a nice explanation to this quote that I put down I wanted to share. Uh, you said, <laughs> confidence is not a precursor. It is a reward for courage. By the time you have the confidence, you don't need it because you already did it. Yeah. I want to put that on the plaque seriously in my office because when I talk to my kids, I have six kids and my wife is pregnant with number seven right now. We're excited. And I want my kids to take challenges and embrace obstacles, embrace failure because while you embrace failure, you can embrace the success. And so many people, they only they don't understand that failure is part of the recipe of success. You got to take chances. You got to uh, take your shots. And I, I love that because when I went to the AmpCon in 2022 20, uh, with my son, Michael, you had him up on the stage. And what you didn't know is that we're having some hard struggles and my, my son, I love him. Uh, I adopted him uh, older in his life, came with some incredible obstacles. Uh, his backstory, pretty, uh, pretty aggressive. And we're trying to work on our relationship. And you said some things on the stage that I'm like insane for the past couple of years, but one year out the other but you had his attention and you're able to help him realize that he's not a victim of his story. As you talked about reframing the past just now, it gets me in my feels to that moment because in my heart, I was, I was praying, God, please, because I, I experienced the amp calm the year before and in what you proposed to Maddie, that was really cool. Uh, and I experienced how important that was. And I was really praying in my heart. I'm like, God, please let something touch Michael. And then the very fact that he was able to be on stage with you and go through that exercise. And it went longer than expected. But for me, that was an answer to divine prayer. It truly mm -hmm. was. Because he was able to make connections <laughs> that his mind was blocking out. Because he didn't want to address it. He didn't want to reframe because reframing means you have to address it yeah. and and you empowered him in a way that was very uh powerful that even to this day we look back with fondness mm. and and i know you have a ton of stories like that where you help people personally and professionally to where they're able to see themselves in a different light and it's amazing when you see how you can be such a positive contributor versus a taker. Hmm. And when you can bring massive value and action that changes lives, that goes beyond transa uh, transactions. It goes beyond uh, a simple connection. It is life-changing. And when you can view yourself from that perspective yeah. and, uh, to be very candid, Renee, I, I hold you in such high, high regard that this is one of the most nervous 
uh, interviews I've prepared for. Because, well, one, go oh, please go ahead. Yeah, because you really are special, and and it, it's not meant to flatter you. It's no. When you come across someone who is authentic and real, doesn't mean it's hard. I mean, not hard, but when you come across someone who truly changes lives and has a mission, and it's not just the commission. Wow. That is powerful. And I can't help but think of your mom and how you have talked about your mom, her impact upon you growing up, going to uh, and helping out with her uh, presentations and so forth. I, I hear of a parent's influence uh, and in this scenario for good. Uh, that's really powerful i'm sorry you had something to say no i just wanted to say that the one thank you and and i remember that that conversation with him and seeing your face and uh that very 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 clearly <clears throat> and i wrote down here and on my notes here i want to i want to go back and try to capture that video some way because i think it was such a really good moment but it, what's what's fascinating is it's you'd said that you know you'd said those same things and it's it's hard to be a prophet in your own town it's it's really really hard and the same thing my kids have been hearing things from me forever and i bet if you were to say them that they, they would land and it's one of the great frustrations maybe humors of you know how god created us but it's um but i think it also serves the purpose of community and why we need yes. people around us and and like it takes a village to raise a child all those types of things and you know my mother used to always say community is the answer what's the question and you can solve almost anything through community and it's but it, it's again can become cliche we don't know what, what what it would even mean by community but yet the best things in life have always come from a community of people helping and turning to someone going through it alone it's it's hard and it's and it's it's uh even when we think about service and value to the world and purpose you, you can't create value by yourself by definition there has to be someone else involved because you create value for yourself it's just it's really really hard true value and true service requires more than one person and so we have to think outside of ourselves in that process but um but yeah i think the whole reframing process and hearing that story and adversity as currency all of that comes down to the reality of reframing what suffering means what the difficult things in life have been and you know, you, you go, you say, I mastered in pivots. Well, because I've been thrown in some really shitty situations. And so, yes. you know, what is it? I read some where it says, you know, I wanted patience and uh, God gave me a line to stand in, you know, like something like that. It was like, God wanted to make me stronger. So he gave me struggle. There's, 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 a, there's a, the opposite of what we think we want. And I'll look, I'll, I'll see if I can look for it because I did keep it. It's usually found uh, in the, the moments that we don't like. It's found in the struggle. It's found in the suffering and the sacrifice. And when we can start reframing those moments or maybe start living more, more intently in those moments, realizing that maybe this is why it's given to me. And then you get into this concept of a more fati, which is that life didn't happen to me. It happened for me. But then there's another cliche that, you know, we have to think beyond. It's not just a cliche. There's a real lesson in there. And it's a cliche because it's a cliche because, um, it's so true. And that truth becomes so true that someone shares it and then somebody hears it and it's so true, it's shared again, they share it and it goes viral. Cliches were the first viral content, if you think about it. Yeah. But yet we stop listening to them and that's where the challenge comes in. You know, I've only heard one other person talk about how life uh, doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. And that was from Tony Robbins. And uh, I, it, for me, that's so powerful. Uh, it really helps you understand uh, obstacles a whole lot differently. Uh, one of my family's favorite movies is Meet the Robinsons. It's a Disney cartoon. Mm -hmm. And it's always talk about keep moving forward. And it's a zany family, you know, that uh, uh, embraces challenges. And I really appreciate that. You know, I really appreciate the fact of embracing a challenge versus running away from them now you also mentioned though something that's very important about human nature um 
about when we're talking about uh, psychological safety and why someone would want to work with you for whatever reason there's a the, that aspect of psychological safety and how we we um go about our business and in our perspective our, our personality i love behavioral finance and so the fact that you know that uh you're a behavioral neuroscience you know really uh stands out to me because you really like to see how people uh react to different conditions and i think understanding that with finance it's it goes beyond technicals because people don't respond to technicals the same way, you know, it, because it's amazing because I'm going into financial planning. I'm in retirement planning as uh, extra things I help out with my clients. So I help them out with uh, the mortgages, um, life insurance, financial planning, you know, and uh, uh, retirement planning. But it's interesting is more people are motivated by risk in the aspect of they want safety. You know, like if you look at the opportunity, it's amazing how many people, if you choose between the security of guarantee versus the opportunity of abundance, when it's when there's a stress part of the situation, when stress is interjected, they act differently. When there's a even kill and their personality is fine, oh yeah, I'll take the opportunity. That looks really good. But as soon as stress is interjected into the scenario and real loss can happen. Yeah personalities act different you know uh, i think it was todd bitter i i think mentioned it um but you know when the the pie shrinks the table manners change you know something like that and uh, I, I find that to be really interesting I, and i love that you know in the aspect of mm -hmm. trying to understand that psychology of people and, and how to help them i think that you know the creating safety happens a lot of different ways like one of them your mindset can create safety in warning you and helping you reframe because then I can approach things. And I found the, the, the poem that I was trying to okay. cite and just said, I said, I asked God, I said, I asked God for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity and God gave me brawn and brain to work. I asked for courage and God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for patience and God placed me in situations where I was forced to wait. I asked for love and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favors and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted, yet I received everything I needed. And so there's that to me is a reframe. It's a mindset. It's a way of finding the good in whatever situation comes your way. And the reason you need to do that is because you can't control it. What other choice do you have? What benefit is there in saying, poor me? There's nothing in that except maybe a reward of somebody enabling you and saying, yeah, poor you. Well, that maybe mom and dad aren't around to do that anymore. And so for me, you don't have that. No one's around to say it. And it, I don't progress forward. I never feel better afterwards. So maybe my difficulties are the ones so that I can create a story of triumph and be the inspiration. And so maybe I am, because I have darkness, I need to be the lighthouse. I mean, there's so many scenarios of this. You go back into... The, the the folklore and fairy tales what what did we fear the most in all fairy tales it was the dragon we that was the scariest thing there was nothing scarier than a dragon well what did the dragon hoard all the gold well what do we want the most the gold okay so to get what we want the most do we have to face what we fear the most hmm. that's the story behind it it's the same that happens in the bible with the serpents and, and moses turning the serpent no the, the his his staff into uh, a, a serpent and god said you look at the serpent they go away we i'm not going to get rid of them for you you have to face the serpent and they faces them and they went away the story repeats itself and now we're in a modern age it's repeating yes and why wait for some biblical story or some fairy tale when we're living that fairy tale right now you can find those moments of, of being a hero for yourself and your family you can find those moments to 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 be the the courage that other people need to see and experience Right now, it's not going to stop waiting. Life is happy to throw those things our way. In fact, most of life, it's going to happen. Wow. You know, this is really timely for me uh, to get a little personal. Uh, this is my last uh, interview for about three weeks because I'm moving. And so I'm moving to uh, Utah. Uh, we're in Idaho right now. We're moving. I'm moving to get a new office, new home. Uh, everything is new. I'm in a whole new market. 
And so I'm starting business from scratch. And for others, it's like, well, that can be scary. When I talk to my kids, I'm like, this is a new adventure. You know, and I was talking to my kids, I'm like, we're going on a new adventure. We got some new opportunities to, to just make new changes. And uh, instead of being paralyzed by fear, you know, which doesn't help anything, as you mentioned, you know, we have tremendous opportunities. And so I really love this. This will be timely. I'll share this with my kids, you know, and, and like, wow, look at this. You know, we have the time to go uh, uh, attack the dragon, you know, and uh, new market, new opportunities. Um, well, Renee, I, I want you to be able to have an opportunity to be able to have the final uh, final statements, final thoughts, because today you have a little bit more limited time with you and, and I appreciate you being on the, the show. I'd like you to be able to, with whatever you would like to share um, uh, to, to the audience, to be able to help them understand how to uh, be their best self. And you've talked a lot about this kind of aspect with this reframing. And, and I think there's a big aspect of uh, coming, coming to the room to give, not to get, you know, there's a big aspect there, but, um, if you would have any points and then how people can uh, reach you, what's your next event? I know you have AmpCon coming again in August, how they can be able to, uh, meet you personally. And, and I want to put that invitation out there to everybody since you're going to have the final say. No matter where you're at on your path, professionally and personally, no matter how great you may think you are or how low you may think you are, Renee impacts souls. He has a way. If you come to the table looking for opportunity to be better, because it's all you have to, you have to come prepared for yourself, he is a master craftsman and that God does inspire him. I do believe that. Now, he doesn't talk about God a lot. You know, he doesn't do that. He's professional in that way. But I do. I don't mind. He has a way. You can call it the universe, karma, whatever you want to label it. He has a way of tapping in with his expertise and his intuition to help you. To help you see the better version of what could be. And I highly recommend you have an opportunity to meet this man and attend and find out for yourself. You cannot be disappointed if you truly come with at least a cracked mind. Let them open up some more, but at least come willing. And I promise you will be blessed. Uh, with that, Renee, please uh, get the final word and how people can reach out to you and take advantage of your services and what you bring to the table, my friend. Well, Tom, thank you for your extremely kind words. The, uh, they are the reason why I push. And so uh, hearing that, it just, uh, it's inspiring and refreshing. So thank you. And it was an honor. You know, you can find me on Learn with Renee on, on Instagram. I get a new video every single day. Those will be across platforms that Learn with Renee. <clears throat> we have our AmpCon coming up in August. Uh, the other thing that we do is we have our Amplify Mentorship Program. Because we wanted to have a way that people could really um, be be surrounded by, by these ideas at least twice a month. And what we do, I bring my I, I, I host one of the sessions and I bring in some of my colleagues, people that you see on the road, people you probably recognize to come in and share a little bit. Like tomorrow we have Jen Gottlieb, who's I think one of the best female speakers in the in the world right now, wrote a book called Be Seen. She was on VH1. She's just a, an incredible human. Very, very, very smart, and uh, she's going to be on the call tomorrow with me. And that's it's just the uh, first month's free too, by the way. So I mean, I can give you the link to that. Just go to my website, click on coaching or amplify mentorship, and it's there. Your first month's free. Test it out, see if you like it. But I think you know, in terms of final message, I would say this: take it, take a good inventory of your life and and who's around you. And you're, you 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 got to look at that cliche of who we become the average of those who, who we surround ourselves with, and. Now, that's where the bigger change comes into play. Like I wanted to get healthy. I hung out with people that were healthy. I wanted to make more money. I hung around with people that, that knew, knew about wealth. And if I needed to hire them, I hired them. 
hired trainers. I hired coaches around money. Just to, I hired a coach one time. I said, help me reframe how I think about money. I had to get out of the old mentality because I, I don't think about it right. And there's guilt associated to it. There's all sorts of shit that's there. So you, you have to go out there and hire it. And it's not given to you. You have to go find it, search it, listen to podcasts like this. And you don't have to make a dramatic exit from a friendship or a relationship, by the way, that isn't positive. You just spend less time there. And there are people that, I, that don't even know that I spend less time with them, but there's a reason for it. When you realize that your time is the only measurement of life, time is the only measurement. And so where I spend my time is where I spend my life. And if I've wasted my time, I've wasted my life. So then you become really, really picky about how you spend your life. And that comes minute by minute, hour by hour. And so when you become intentional to say, I'm going to spend it with the people that are pushing me in the right direction. I want to be somebody that is pushing others in the right direction. And magically you attract those. Just be that person, be the person this world needs. If it's dark, turn the light on. Maybe it's dark because you're the one that's meant to shine. Don't wait for some cavalry or some savior to come save you. They're not coming. And I'll tell you why, because maybe it's you. Maybe you're the cavalry. And if you live by that philosophy, you'll not only be an inspiration to other people, but you'll find your way out of situations that maybe you felt stuck in. Well, very timely. Being a selfish on this part, you know, it's perfect for me. I, I think it definitely would help uh, many others. Thank you very much, Renee. Uh, thank you for sharing your time and your expertise. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Absolutely, Tom. Thank you so much. It's always an honor. Thank you for watching and listening in to today's episode. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can strengthen our mission and get the message out to others on how to leverage to build wealth. Who's next?